But it was only one week. But, but usually, usually, usually it's the next day. But I was just had surgeries all week. I know, I know. I'm sorry. The what? Yes, when he was doing your mouth like rrr, 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 like that, he's so mean. Was it funny? <laughs> it was funny. Like, I know. Hey, buddy, give me a bump. Bump. Other hand. Other hand. Whoop. <laughs>
come before you today. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for another day, another uh, service to be here, Lord God, an opportunity, Lord God, to spend time with you. God, I just ask you in this house today, Lord God, to break the Lord God, every burden that God has got us bound up in. Lord, I just ask you, Lord God, have your way in this church today, Lord God. Let us hear your word. Let us respond to your word today, Lord God. And we'll give you honor, praise, and glory because you're worthy. God, we love you and we praise you. God for everything. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Let's go to church today. Hallelujah.
drifting so far away from God right now. And you wonder if God even hears your prayers. I want you to know this morning. It's in the valley that God's going to change you. Amen. Sometimes you just want to come down to this altar and you just want to lay this prison. But God's saying, this, I want you to listen to this verse right here. Keep playing, Brother Josh. Keep playing. Listen to what God's saying in this. Do
to hear Joey Martin be redneck beats everything I've ever heard. And I'm not going to talk about somebody's papers. <laughs> the, I'm telling you, the play will be wonderful. We're going to finish putting all the pieces together and all the stuff before and after. Please, on our Christmas play, please invite people to that. That's the time where we see people that never come to church come to church. Amen? Let's please do that. Do we have any other announcements this morning? Anybody this morning? Do you have anything? EJ does. I'll do it. This Thursday, we've got a list that we're going to go to the Christmas show, right? Is that the right? Yes, we're going to the Christmas show. And I told my wife, I dread driving that bus to Charlotte. But we are going Thursday morning. We're leaving the church at 8 o'clock. We're going to go eat breakfast and go down. And Melody said, we got to have at least five hours there. And I'm going, <laughs> five hours. But it's wonderful. It's really fun. So we're going to leave here at 8 o'clock Thursday morning for the Christmas show. Is that it? Fire fall. Fire fall. Josh, are you here? Yeah. What time are we leaving this week? What time are you leaving? We're leaving 3.30 on Friday afternoon to go to Firefall. How many kids you got going, brother? Uh, about 15 so far. 15 young people headed back up to Whittier. We're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord. Amen. Now, today's a very special day. This is when we recognize our veterans. And I know we've got Bud out today, and Jeremy's recovering from a, a surgery, and I wish they could be here today. And I'm not going to play a, a sappy video and all those other things. But I want you to, to be a veteran means you have served and have fought for your country. And I would like to recognize all of our veterans today. Please stand and come up front if you can. Brother Townsend's not here today, Bud and Jeremy. Brother Larry's just getting over surgery. I don't know how he's walking straight, but he's here today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our country is free. Amen. Amen. We get to come to church on a Sunday morning. We get to do so many things because of our freedom, which was bought by men like these who have served our country in the military. Today, I want to give each of you a long view church of God hat. You ever wear a hat, right? All right. Got you a long view church of God hat. And also we've got these little pins of the cross and the American flag. And I want to present these to you. And I want to shake your hand and say thank you for your service. Thank you, Larry, for your yeah, service. You. Where did you serve I served in the U.S. Navy from 1966 to the U.S.S. Forest which is an aircraft carrier out of Norfolk at the time. Where else did you go? Uh, I was, I went to, I guess, Cuba, all down into the, you know, the islands down there, the Virgin Islands. I went to Moranium City. I've been in all the countries over like Turkey, France, Greece. Uh, Spain, I mean, Italy, I mean, I just, every country everywhere I went to, I was gone, I left here, and I was gone 10 months before I come back to the U.S. And I, I, and at the time, you know, I never said this to nobody. You get older, and I know Larry probably feels the same. I had to go in a roundabout way. I joined the Navy, but I was going to go in the Army. I had a choice, so I went in the Navy. And I, I know four years was a long time, but, and I give my, I guess you'd say I give my prime of my life, you know, from 19 to 23. I served in the U.S. United States Army. I was in Korea for 13 months. I fired missiles, froze to death. Roast him to death, but it uh, was an honor to know what I, I would do for my friends and family. Let's stand. This morning, I'm going to pray. 
I want you to come around and I want you to shake their hands and tell them thank you. And anytime you see a veteran, I remember just a couple of weeks ago, we were we were down at Duke Hospital and I took me and Brianna went to get something to eat and there was a guy that was in his last few months of reserves and I said, thank you for your service. And he stopped and a tear came down his cheek. We don't say it enough. We don't say it enough. Lord God, I love you and I thank you, Lord God, for who you are. I thank you, Lord God, for sending men like this, Lord God, to protect us. But Lord God, also... Also in this world, Lord God, we need Christian veterans too, Lord God, to make a way. And God, I ask you to bless all veterans, Lord God. I ask you to bless them and keep them, Lord God. And God, bless them in every area of their life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you don't mind, come around, shake hands, and go around and shake hands for a few moments. Come on.
Praise God, sing, play your instruments. We are such a blessed church. Amen. 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 Such a blessed church. You may be sitting there. You can be sitting. Sitting. <laughs> sitting. There you go, Josh. You got one to make fun of before I got started. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Josh gives me such a hard time. And last week he had Brienne doing it. Wednesday night, I preached a message about no regrets, but somehow no regret come out with wets. <laughs> yeah, so they gave me a hard time about with wet and stuff. Yeah, last week when I preached about Lazarus, somehow no regret came out Lazarus. Josh reminds me of all these things. I don't know how many people hear my, my tongue being tied, but I appreciate him for that so much. <laughs> Let the children stay in here today. I want to speak to you from my heart today. Yes, I have a message. And before we get ready to do anything right now, I want to I want us to do a couple of things. Sarah, Sarah has one of her friends leaving for basic training tomorrow. Man, you know how scary that would be as a parent, right? And also, we have a young man named Connor here with us today. And he's home for a visit with his grandparents. And he is in the military, and we're so proud of you. Thank you so much for what you do. But I want Sarah to come up and we're going to lay hands on her. We're going to pray for the safety of her friend named Seth. And Connor, if you don't mind, can you come up and let us pray blessings over you too? Is that okay? So if you come on up and Sarah, if you'll come up. Now, if you, I know it would be kind of hard, Larry. I know you heard from your surgery, Brother Ray. But can I have you guys come up and help pray over these two for me? If you'll just stand facing me. And if I could just get some people to come up here, please. And let's pray the safety upon Seth and continue for God to do great things through you. Okay, Connor? We're proud of you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> but let's lay hands on them and let's just pray today. Lord God, as we come before you today, Lord God, as Sarah wants to stand in for her friend Seth. God, as he leaves your base of training, we ask that your hand be upon his life. God, that as he goes, Lord God, that you will be prone for us and put us in his mind, Lord God. God, that you will use this, Lord God, to grow him closer to you, Lord God. I pray for his protection, Lord God. God, I pray over Connor. God, as this, this new uh, adjustment in life, this new beginning of life, Lord God. God, I just ask that you pour into him, Lord God. Let him know how proud we are of him and how important it is, Lord God, for the work that he's doing. And we ask you to bless him, Lord God. Bless him, Lord God, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Uh, come here, Carlos. Now, we had another veteran in here today, and she didn't want to be recognized. Can I just embarrass her? <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that okay? I've already done it. <laughs> That's all right. No, we won't. You'll never get it. 
I said, okay. We still, since we were over here, we drove by. And as I drove by, my heart leaped out of my chest. It just leaped out of my chest. And as I drove around, I stopped across the highway over here by the hardware store. And I couldn't drive for nearly 30 minutes because the Lord told me that's where we were going to be. And almost six years now, this has been our home. And me and my wife are looking for a permanent home here because I believe I'll retire here. Amen. Now, I hope that's all right with you guys. Amen. But it's the first day that I saw this place. It was like it was something special. Now, every ministry stop along my way over the last 20-something years have been special. I've enjoyed every one of them. Some were real hard, and it's been hard here at times. Amen. Does anybody remember when all the all the way down the hall and all the classrooms we had no no things up there because all the water would come in and we had big barrels sitting around catching water? Does anybody remember that? Because there was only about 18 of us then, right? But God has blessed us and blessed us and kept blessing us. Some of my favorite things that we've done since I've been here is I love the fall festivals. Do you realize that at a fall festival we gave away 800 or 1,000 hot dogs? That many people came through our property and people were actually asleep because they came to church after that. The next year we did over 800. I love the fact that I don't know how God did it, but these special needs kids from East Burke all of a sudden are coming to our church every week and Leslie and, and Angel and other people have helped her over the, the last six years. And that ministry has produced, I don't know how many salvations, how many have been saved through that? Every year. Every year. Daddy is a product of that ministry. Amen. I love the fact that we have went to the fire department and the police department and prayed over the flag there. And we every year take them big baskets of snacks and, and stuff like that. And I'm telling you, every time that they say anything, go along with you. That, those people right there, they do something in the community that nobody else does. See, that makes me feel good because love you has stepped up and stepped out into the community. Does anybody remember 200 loaves of bread that we gave out a couple of years ago? Door to door. Then, after the life of me, other things that we do. Do you realize we bought a bus? The bank wouldn't let us have a loan. And in three, was it how many weeks? Three weeks, we went and purchased $11,000 bus. And you know, that bus since then has been everywhere. We have went to winter. Where, where have we went? Josh has been everywhere with that bus. He got his license. And I'm telling you, just a few weeks ago at our couples retreat up at the top of Grandfather Mountain, as I watched Josh drop up that, <laughs> with that bus, I'm going, Lord, Lord, let him make it, let him make it. <laughs> God has blessed us tremendously. How many people have we fed out of our, our pantry? I, I don't know. How many people have been saved in this community because Longview Church of God has stepped up and done extraordinary things in our community? I like the fact that this church is a giving church. Ask the little girl in China with her babies if she appreciates us sending her some money once in a while because souls are being saved. Amen. You are responsible for a missionary in China. How cool is that? Does that make you feel good as a church? There's many things that we, we do as a, as a church that you're proud of. I'm proud that we are known and people come into this church and they get something they haven't got anywhere else. But we've come to a moment in Longview's history where something has to change. Uh oh, I ain't going nowhere. We've got to decide what kind of church we want to continue to be. Welcome to Longview Church of God. Everyone, not just some, because this church is built upon unconditionals. Unconditional love, acceptance, and forgiveness. That means we want people to come into 
God that changes their lives. And here lately, I've had it in my spirit, Josh, about living intentional, doing things intentional, doing things that matter, doing things that make a difference. I want us to be intentional. I want us to be an intentional reader of God's Word. That means to be intentional, that's just not by some freak accident that you land in front of a Bible one day. Be intentional. Set a time, uh, aside time to read the Word. Set aside time in your personal life, whether it be in your car, or it be in your bedroom, or while you're taking a shower. Be a worshiper. Listen to the Christian music. Let it get in your spirit. Be an intentional bringer of God's Word to the people. Amen. I want us today to talk about something that I very dislike very much talking about. We have to learn how to be intentional with our finances. I've been here a long time now. I don't talk about money. Agreed? We take up offerings and we do stuff. But I don't talk about money a lot. I, I really feel that's between you and God. As I get older, I am more aware of what things cost. Let's do a quick poll today and see who we got in the house today. How many of you drive cars, drugs? How many of you know where to get Jeep gas? We do, don't we? We look at it. If I'm going down the road and Walmart over here is at 241 and that's 250, I'm going to go to the one that's 241. Amen? Is that y'all the same way as I am? Honestly, you're buying 10 gallons of gas. It's not that big a difference money-wise. But we're always looking for that great deal. It's been said that money makes life more enjoyable. Do we agree with that? Josh, I've had times in my life where I was miserable with money and I was miserable without money. Has anybody been there before? I've been, I've seen those who have more money they me enjoying life. And I've seen people with less money than me enjoying life also. I've seen people where their full thing was about money in their life. And I, I've seen people that it really don't matter anything to them about their life. Money can be such a challenge. Money can be a struggle. Can anybody give me an idea on that now, if you were new to Longway, you know that I hardly ever do the money thing. We were doing a fundraiser over here. We've got some in it that we've been doing. I mean, we have spoke about it. You know, this church put a $55,000 roof on it here five years ago. But we cannot be intentional people if I don't talk about money. See, this is the most unpopular sermon a pastor can preach. The first one is this, hell. How many enjoy going to church and hearing the preacher talk about going to hell? Not many. We want the good sermons, right? The lift me up, the big smile kind of sermons. And we absolutely just, we don't like money sermons. See, but I've got a few biases that come along with the way I look at money. As me as the pastor of Longview, I'm very biased about things. I believe in my heart we have the best church in this state, in this, this county. And I, I think we have the greatest church. I want us, the church, the Longview Church of God, to reach people for Christ. I want us to do ministry. Agreed? Yeah. If we're not coming to do ministry, what are we doing? We're being pew sitters. We sit and soak and we leave and everything's good on next week. Amen? But here's the real, real truth about stuff. Those things cost money. Those things cost money. So we are able to fulfill our mission and the Great Commission through the resources.